Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. It is not our nature to do good things. It takes your hand to be like you are. And so is my prayer. Every time we are called upon, give us the heart to trust that we can still continue to live because it's only when we give that we receive. As we start this session, we are just having a candid talk. And again, we are asking that may no one be offended. We only seek to right the wrongs we have always done. So may your spirit lead us and guide us, but above all, deepen our understanding, broaden our mind, and give us a clarity of thought. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I thought I should leave by five. It's already four. We'll see how to go about it. Um, in the morning we said that marriage is there for children. Nothing else. Their happiness comes first. Your happiness comes second. And for a long time, I also didn't understand it. But there's a way you study the word and through the leading of the Holy Spirit, times you're just seated, you get these inspirations, you piece one plus one, Mama White says precept by precept, line upon line, a little here, a little there, and wow, you realize you have this mysterious revelation that only the Holy Spirit could reveal to you. So when we preach like this, it's not because we have read more than you. Many times, it is God speaking. And we have the burden to share it. So this is the truth that transformed my thinking about marriage and family. You have heard me preach about it. It's the one lesson. Anywhere I go, I must speak about it. It can take different forms. But until you get it, you'll miss everything in marriage. This thing is small. Okay, fine. If you can't buy a piece of land, buy a big pulpit. <laughs> Spacious for the time. And don't go ahead and get us a big fault. This I know is the one for funerals, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Looks like that. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it in funerals. And then slowly by slowly, it's finding its way into churches. Slowly by slowly. It's now finding its way into churches. And when we are doing Bible study, you have a lot of things spread everywhere. So this cannot be enough. I know next time we come, you don't need the church. You can grab the blessing, even you yourself. Just go. Blessings of the elders. Just bring the church a pulpit. Okay. We, we don't need to fundraise for a pulpit. Just tell the elders, give me the design. Vote it. How much? You submit the money. Okay, if you can get a few friends, tell them that the pulpit costs a hundred thousand. I give ninety-five. Who's helping me give the other five? So that the church, the whole church owns it. At times, there's danger in funding it all yourself. They'll say pulpit you know. That's why it's a guaya canisa. But I say, Ebu, nene nenda kubeba yo pulpit yongwa. 
at times it's good even when you know you can fund the whole of it allow church members to to chip in sasa aikui ya mtu mmoja inakuwa ya kanisa kanisa nzima I'm more interested in our children and they are burden to me for one reason Ellen White makes a sad statement because myself I would get worried about our children when I hear people say that children are not seen us all children will go to heaven and i battled and asked myself really is it true until i came across this quote in the book child guidance and this shook me a little bit And so I'll not give this presentation whole as it is. I just want to piece it with something from here and we'll call it an evening. The book is Child Guidance chapter 1 to the reader. It says it is the privilege of parents to take their children with them to the gates of the city of God. saying as you get there i have tried to instruct my children to love the lord to do his will and to glorify him is a privilege that will move with my two children Is it is it Rigiji that said he regrets he gave birth to two children? Oh that was just a rumor. Just true yeah Rigiji says he would have given birth to and is advising people to give birth to not less than seven. And he says God will take care of of them which is true. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> There are people that have chosen by choice not to have children mama white says a childless marriage by choice is because of selfishness a selfish heart that would decide not to raise children and some of us our characters have been shaped by our word children actually you see a child and you see yourself in that child they humble you children humble you you'll find a woman talk so badly about people's children out here until she gives birth si hata mjui kutunza watoto na vile wanakimbia kwa kanisa kwa ninyi watoto wenu wanakuangaje waacha atapata wake anakuja mpaka hapa pulpe children have a way of doing what of humbling us some like some white says he's a privilege to take them to the gates of heaven and say you as a parent i have tried i love that statement people have always said there's no perfect parent which is true but the lord expects us to do what to try i have tried my best What is your best? Your best is if you are asked to do it again, you will do exactly what you did. That is your best. So I have tried to instruct. And that is where the burden is. To do what? Instruct. Our Bible study begins there. What is your understanding of instructing? don't start thinking oxford dictionary just just keep it easy okay what is your understanding of to instruct 
what goes into instruction i'm going to kisumu 3 hours drive so you will not keep me here for long we are in bible study what does it mean to instruct Yes, Elder Marvin. No, I'm used to I'm used to Elder Marvin until when the, the word elder is so, so heavy in my mouth. Because me, I know the Mashal, Sharon, and Marvo. So Marvin is so long. So Elder Marvin, if you hear me say Marvo, it's just okay. <laughs> yes. to teach the ways that ought to be taught what if i said what does it mean to instruct the ways of the lord so in other words elder marvin you've just given us a synonym to instruction what goes into instruction think i also don't have an answer I just want us to reason together as children of god a little here a little there and we have an answer yes the creature that he has created that the creature may leverage upon the principle that is implanted as they move mm. and as they go together so that god may be able to accomplish his plan of salvation through man now as we proceed in the preceding verses that are now uh, it is now uh, verse, uh, chapter 2 16 uh, and 17 uh, god says that uh, thou shall eat of the fruit in the garden of eden but thou shall not eat from the fruit in the midst of the garden of eden god is still giving an instruction so that if it happens that the creatures do it the opposite of the instruction definitely there is a consequence so the instruction comes with a consequence we instruct that we may understand what is to be done therefore having instructed you give room for choice because our god is god who instructs and then allows you whether you will leverage upon his principles that he initiated or you will do otherwise so in that context according to the word of god god started by giving instructions and that is why even when man was created instructed by the way by saying let us now make man after our image and in our likeness that was an instruction god himself instructed the way he wanted us to be mm -hmm. now having done that i realized that uh well, i wanted to give a reference uh, first of all i understand what, what the bible uh, instructs us of understand of instruction is that we get instructions to guide us to lead us that we may be able to fulfill the intended will of god thank you my pastor thank you i'm i'm borrowing from marvin i'm borrowing from you to instruct from marvin to teach from you to inform okay so it means someone is destitute of knowledge completely and so you begin to share you begin to teach those that are in the universities they are called instructors they are called what lecturers you want to do a unit of a course in the university let's say 
Mathematics 001. Do you do it in one second? Huh? Do you do it in one second? You daily have your word, your instructor, that comes to class every, every day, and there's a syllabus you ought to do what? To cover. It means it is systematic, is it? Yes. It's, there's no guesswork that goes into it. It's systematic, and I know I'm moving from point one to point B, and I'm building slowly as we move higher and, and higher. So it means time must also go into what? Into it. By the time you finish four years in the university and you're given powers to do what? To read. Is a process my elder, is it? Instructors one after the other have been coming and sharing with you knowledge, sharing with you information. Now we say you are mature enough. You can now go out and practice. Hmm. I'm asking. When you say I have tried to instruct my children in that light, let me see a parent who has done that. Hmm. Do you think what we do in the name of parenting is parenting? Let me see a parent who has a syllabus knowing that these are the things I want to take my children through. And this is how we want to move. So our children are growing by chance. Nataka tukubaliane tu. It's a mental syllabus. It's not written. Do we even have the mental syllabus? <laughs> to know that I have a three-year-old I want to instruct. By the time she is six years, this is what I want my child to have done what? Known. Is it there? I must to 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 semezane tu kwa ukweli, kwa upole. Wacha nirudishe sauti chini kidogo. <laughs> Tusemezane tu kwa upole. Iko kitu kama hiyo. Hakuna. The truth is we have left our children to chance. That is the truth. Because number one, even the time is not. That is the reality. Number one, even the time is not there. And on this I take it up with mothers. Because the father is away and the father plays a supportive role in the instruction of children. In parenting, a mother is the one that is primarily the one in charge of raising a people for God. But why can't we do it? Sitaki tutoke hapa kama tumekosana. Nataka tusemezane ukweli na tujue vile tuna move forward. Sindiyo? Why don't we do it? We are never there. And we have delegated that duty to the Sabbath school teacher. We have delegated that duty to the pastor. We have delegated that duty to the teacher in school. And we are comfortable. And we know our children are growing up. And I say children don't grow up. They are not plants. We think we are raising our children. Let me just make a sad note. Parenting can never be delegated. It is an illegality to delegate parenting. You can delegate anything, but you can never delegate what? Parent. But you and I agree we have delegated parenting first and foremost to the house help, is it? Who also does not do it? Because when you come back home, you want to make a lot of noise. How you pay her 4,000 and she has not cleaned the house, is it? Yeah. So even the house girl has no time to parent. The house girl only has time to make sure the baby is full and sleeps. 
It has even worsened to the point we have delegated homework from school to the what? Today, we have qualifications for a domestic worker. You say at least from four. Why? Not because you want her to work thoroughly. You want when your children come from school, <laughs> she can check whether there is homework and also take them through what? The home. So that when you come as a professional, <laughs> you are sure they bathed, they ate, they have done homework, your house is clean. And even see the food you say, Mbono liacha kitungui kaungua. Hey. And you sit doing what? Nothing. It, you, you're chasing money. You've gone to make money. I can assure you that child is not being raised. That child is just by chance growing up. I think by now you know where I'm heading. It will eat you up, but at least you will have a choice to make. I have tried to instruct my children to love the Lord. To do his will. And to glorify him. If Christ came today, how many can comfortably say that statement? No, he's just adjusting the <laughs> And then the statement goes on to say, to such such parents, the gate will be thrown open and the parents and children will enter in. But all cannot enter. That is the saddest bit for me. And that is what made me think twice. But all cannot enter, both parents and children. And I asked God, then which is the right age to start begin to begin start I mean to begin yeah, beginning and starting is the same thing. Which is the right age to start instructing a child? If all children will not enter then what is the right age? But before we get to the age issues, it says some are left outside with their children whose characters have not been transformed by submission to the will of God. A hand is raised and the words are spoken, you have neglected home duties. So why will our children miss heaven? Because it was their choice or because it was us who neglected home duties? It would be sad when our children will miss eternity because we neglected home duties duties. To chase a sphere that we thought was higher, that only brought us far below what God intended for us. Far below. <laughs> you have failed to do the work that would have fitted the soul for a home in heaven. You cannot enter. So number one, you neglected home duties. What kind of neglect? Failure to fit up a character for the home in where? In heaven. And so for me today, when we sit down and ask what is parenting and people say hey, you should be there for your children provide good food, they should have a house they should have clothes parenting has nothing to do with the schools our kids go to and today I realize people take children to good schools for competition 
They sit in the office. They have these discussions. I have my child in Makini. I have mine in Braiban. I have mine in Naga Khan. And then another colleague feels the pressure. And comes back home and says, Bona watoto wetu wanasoma. Wareng. Kuna ingini bona wainito wareng. Did I say something like wareng here? Bona watoto wetu wanasoma wareng. I said something like wareng. Wareng. Wareng ni kizungu. Wareng. And then there is pressure in the house and I've seen women push husbands. Let me tell you, some of our husbands are not corrupt because they want it. They're trying to meet a standard. A wife is insisting. A wife is trying to live the life of the neighbor. So you push this young man. And why do you think our young girls are getting married to people's husbands? It's because the person who's supposed to marry her has not yet made it in life. I mean, it's not his mistake. His time has not come. The sponsor has a life. Worked hard with that girl to be where they are. And today our girls want to start. It's because there's a life social media has painted and she feels she has to live that life. That life you cannot get it with some 30 year old who doesn't think you can't. Not even 40. And because she has gone to school. She has gone to school. Because she has gone to school. I tell you, a woman without education is a time bomb. I always tell people, she's such a power that God had to gab in a weak vessel for you to handle it. That is the truth. She had to be given a weak body for you to handle it as a man. Otherwise, you cannot handle that. You can't. And that is why I keep on insisting on this age different thing, different thing. You're not getting it. When he says, I will make him a helpmeet, the word in Hebrew is Ezer. Ezer is the only word used of God that only he shares with a woman. The Bible says, He is my help and my salvation. The word in Hebrew is he is my ezer. Only a woman shares that term with God. To mean without God there's nothing you can do. And he says it. He says without me you can do. That is simply to say, we don't need to complicate the assessment. Without a woman you cannot do anything. And that is the truth. You can't. You can't. You can't. I'm saying you cannot. It's such an inherent power that when you see a woman sticks through an abusive marriage and you hear some people say Kwanya hezi toka lazima akai hapo what makes us stick through is not that we don't have a place to go. What makes us stick through is the inherent power in us to stay. We can handle it. When the day she walks out on you, I can assure you, you are back to zero. When the Lord says that it is not good for man to be alone, it does not speak. I mean, it speaks of Adam's inadequacy, not Eve's insufficiency. Otherwise, Eve can roll without a man. And you've seen widows left at 23, 25. Today they're 60, still intact, serving the Lord. Kept your name 
for years. She can move. But for you, because you are inadequate without her, it means she is provided to complete you. She comes to make you adequate. It means when she leaves, you are back to what? Inadequacy. And that is why when your first wife leaves the wife of your youth, for many women that have watched, they will marry another one, it fails. They get another one, it fails. You will keep marrying. Uyo mama akikisha haindi mali. Omba tu kabisa mungu kama kuna kitu na kuomba hii maisha yangu. Uyo mama siwa ifanya ni. Sabu akikuacha. She rubbishes your life. No man will occupy that space. Never. You'll, even when you bring 20, the space will always feel there's something missing. So this is just a power in her. She completes your, your life and she makes things better. So for you to manage her, make sure you're even older than her with significant years. She's a thinker. My men conquer cities. <laughs> but it takes a woman to conquer a man that conquered what? <laughs> She's not a small thing. She's not. I wouldn't lie to you. A woman is a being you can't compare to a man. You cannot. That is the truth. I wouldn't lie to you. She can build you, she can take you down in one second. All the great men in the Bible, tell me what took them down. Wine, sindio? Walelewa waka 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 anguka, sindio? What the? Kwanzi Adam! Who took Adam down? If. And the spirit of prophecy says, after she had eaten the fruit, the devil used her as an agent for the fall of her husband. After Adam, which other great man do you know? Hey, mumeruka mbaka Samson naraka. Abraham is there. Abraham was a good man. He started suffering when a woman suggested get a word. Let's get a child. Yeah. It's when the, a woman can corrupt your mind. And she brings it in such a way you don't see any problem in it. And she must have come and said, now Abraham, Najua, Najua, we are intelligent beings. God didn't create us. We are beings who can do what? Can think. God has given us some wisdom. You know, he's now saying that you'll be the father of a great nation. Yani hata we wezi reason, ni mepita, ni ni childbearing, ni komenopos. Hata wewe hiyo science kidogo tumefanya. Si ukifika menopos, mutu wawezi kufanya nini? kosa. Mimi naona kitu Mungu anajaribu kusema ni tutumie nini? Tutumie akili. Sasa sitaki tutoe msichana nje, wacha tuchukue huyo msichana mwenye tunajua, si ndio? Huyo hapa ndani. And the girl's like brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. I wish you read spirit of prophecy how Eve came to Adam. I wish you read it. Some of these things you don't you just Yani mpaka mnilipie fare nikuje niwasome so pia hapa. I wish you read it. How she came to her husband. Mama White says after he ate it and realized they had fallen, he regretted he ever left her to live by her his side. He regretted permitting her 
to leave his side because white says they had been told they were in less danger when they were together than they were when they were what? apart less danger even today it is true you are in le- i'm not saying that when you live with your husband nothing can happen kuna wahanyaji pro pro ama wa pro pro max uko na yeye stella na hanya na mna uko na yeye kila siku so people say people say it's not about the distance it's about emotions let me tell you both have dangers whether you stay with your wife or not both have what then but the truth is when you are with your wife the danger is less and i've seen men in permit wives and they come and tell you eh kuna job nyingine poa hapa itatusaidia kujenga ile nyumba tumekuwa tukitaka kujenga twa anafanya kazi huko kakuma anafanya na UN na wewe unaishi kondele kondele ni wapi pale kisumu alafu anakuachia watoto sababu hizi ndio na hizi ndio na watoto kakuma kidogo tu hivi kidogo tu hivi she begins to to interact with men that have traveled the world anaanza kushita ile ni ngonae kwa nyumba mbona iongea hivi I'm handling a marital case of a woman walking far away from her husband but the husband insisted leave me the children so the children are with the husband the woman is actually moved with another man and she has said I'm not coming Manda kwanza kwanza anaenda bila mzigo ya kwani alikuja na watoto Amenda The man is lamenting he doesn't know what to do. Tulifika je airport as tuko naongea juu ya nini tukafika hapo? Woman. Abraham listened to Sarah and it disturbed the peace of their home. And then their son Isaac came. There's no drama, so much drama in their lives but gave birth to i think that gene was 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 could i want a gene dominant in him it was it was recessive in him and became dominant in 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 jacob and jacob just like his grandfather now takes how many is far is grandfather took one one house guard he me took how many house guards two took him down a woman it's a woman that came in the night slept with him without knowing that he's actually not the one he thought like that thing that thing i can't i can't figure it out how do you sleep with a woman a whole night and you not and you don't even know who you you at 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 you wake you and you know you hey how how ndio sawa fikiria hiyo kitu ama tufanye bible study sahi tujue ili kwa how 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 do you sleep with a woman unless they intoxicated him they must have intoxicated him you cannot sleep with a woman a whole night and not know who you're sleeping with i'm telling you women are dangerous And I'm sure she must have colluded with the father and told the father you know what daddy in our custom a second child cannot uh, the, the firstborn must get married before the what because that is what, that is what Laban told him in our place here you cannot take a younger one before the older one elder one is taken so he must have sat somewhere with the father and said now look daddy my sister is going and I, I don't even have I'm not even dating in the first place and then I come back to fanya hivi See they said they were partying. Yeah, he organized a, a feast. Yes. So I'm sure it is in that feast they intoxicated this guy. Say so what we do now? Let's intoxicate him daddy. And the father agreed. And they intoxicated him. And the girl went. I don't know what they told 
huyu mwingine Rachel I don't know what they told her I have no idea for her also just to sit around and she knows the time for sleeping has come and is not being called I don't know <laughs> They must have kept her busy somewhere because I believe there was a there was a procedure Yeah, there was a procedure. Alijua ni siku yake. Si alijua ni siku yake. Alijua ni siku yake. Iko saa ikifika, unaenda na bwana yako. Bwana yako. Yaani hata yeye penye amekaa angeshuka aseme, "Eh, yaani kitu haifiki." Love pop, jua imewaka. Unapata kama mama wengine wako hivyo. You know, Leo was a squint. Yeah, Leo was a squint. Yaani hata kafanya hivi nilikunywa pombe mingi nalo yananiangalia hivi. <laughs> Leo was a squint. A squint on these people you tell them look at me because you think they are looking up here. They tell but I'm looking at you you know because they are eyes are like this. Ndio akashtuka. I tell you men women are dangerous. If you don't have the character of Joseph you can easily go down. It is women that slept with their father. Lot. They also intoxicated their father and slept with their father and gave birth to Ammon and what? Yes. This guy is a species so dangerous. Don't underestimate it. Sometimes I wonder how you can beat a woman and she still wakes up and puts water for you in the bedroom and does for you your breakfast. Your breakfast is kunywe. Sometimes I wonder how. And then came David. I wish you knew the description of David. David is known as a man of war. When, when his son Absalom tried to overthrow him and someone gave him orders and said you cannot attack your father like that that guy has been to war since his childhood we are talking about a man that took down a giant who the courage of that man a giant is coming he's not running away everyone is running away men who have been to battlefield for years he has never been to the battlefield men are dolela kifanyi hivi na kanyage chini watu wanatoka and the ranks were getting slimmer and slimmer until this boy came and Goliath stood and he also moved forward and Goliath said wewe unanijua ya nakujua but who took him down who took the man that took Goliath down <laughs> a woman They're dangerous. You're safer when you're far older than her. But when your age range is just here, hey, atakupeleka mbio hujawaiona. Controlling her becomes very what? Very difficult. Because number one, she has gone to school. Number two, she has her money. Number three, she's your age mate. Number four, she fears the Lord. The fear of the world lord is the beginning of she has a wisdom earthly and heaven <laughs> coupled with the inherent power that she has as a woman you can't handle that thing you cannot solomon women the strongest man samson who uko na bahati sana unaweza mslap na anakuangalia na bahati sana ngoja siku siku atakuchangamkia iko <laughs> siku atakuchangamkia paka utajiuliza ni, ni mama ama ni baba <laughs> sije tulifika hapo aje what were we discussing until we got there What are we discussing? Instruction. And I was saying there's a space for us. 
that we have neglected. For a sphere that is deceptively higher, but it's not. And we have neglected the home duties and failed to fit up a character for heaven. Completely. The gates are closed to the children because they have not learned to do the will of God. And to parents because they have neglected the responsibilities resting upon them. So both you and your child are locked out. A parent for neglect of responsibility. A child failure to learn to do the will of who? But why is the child failing? Because has not been instructed by the parent. It kept my mind rolling. It kept my mind rolling until I read another chapter. I'm trying to look at it, to look for it. Just give me some time. Just give me some time. Every time I'm looking for it, it, it disappears. Yeah, I think it's chapter 75 talks about leading little children to Christ. How early may children become Christians? And then says this. The subtitle is age of no consequence. There is no age you can attach to a child and say, now they are old enough to learn about who? Christ. Listen. says this. An eminent divine was once asked, how old a child must be before there was reasonable hope of his being a Christian. Age has nothing to do with it, was the answer. You see, the way we leave our children, we say, I can reason with a 10 year old at least. Because you feel, William, to talk about my kids. You feel, you feel the only language she knows is when you pull your, your, your breast, is it? Yeah. You think that is the only thing uh, she knows. Still. Because you, you look at her, you feel you should be talking the way I'm talking to you. And you're like, let her grow fast to about class four, then we can begin to, to, to engage. And then some people will tell you, watoto ni malaika, watoto si malaika. I hate that statement that you are totally malaika. Have you heard people say that? Mutoto ni mwanadam, malaika ni mala? Malaika. Ati wataenda mbinguni, awajui chochote. Leo ukai ukijua, siyo wote wanaenda wabi. Mbinguni. Sasa anasema hivi. Age has nothing to do with it was the answer. Love to Jesus. Trust. Repose, confidence are all qualities that agree with the child's nature. Naturally, a child can love. Confidence, a child can have it. It agrees with his nature. You don't need a specific age to teach a child love. So he ends by saying this. As soon as a child can love and trust his mother, then can he love and trust Jesus as the friend of his mother. Jesus will be his friend, loved and honored. As soon as a child can love and trust his own mother. Which, is, which age is that? Which age is that? To watch yata yatumbo, yatumbo tunongea mutu watuoni. The minute you hold a child and put your breast in their mouth, they know this is not an ordinary person. They begin to trust. Because this is where I get my what? My food. That is why at times a child is sleeping, anyone can walk in and they're still asleep. The minute the mother walks in, they're already attached to your smell. 
They know this one doesn't this smells like daddy but <laughs> <laughs> even if I wake up at this idea <laughs> but, but <laughs> this smells like auntie auntie gives me food yes but there's something else and when you walk in they wake up it's just an attachment they have learned to trust and love their mother this child is old enough to know about the jesus of our mother and that is why pastor abigail will tell you when we are handling children's ministries we have a program for children's ages 0 to 3 a curriculum a syllabus so robust the other day i was buying lesson books for my children and then they told me pastor but i thought you gave but the other day we have for 0 to 3 it's called the beginner is it and i said mm, i'm not buying ule ataju kusema habari yako is now she saying mama once in a while baba <laughs> mama is a lot because mama gives gives some some breast milk okay then i thought to myself i remember this this statement and i remember when i was back in baraton i used to handle that class 02 but we had split it to 022 we called it cradle cradle 1 cradle a 022 it was a serious class serious than what i saw here for adult class this morning serious class we would meet weekly to plan for the lesson of sabbath and we make sure we have all the materials and equipment and we know that this is the flow it was the most active and children behave like they were listening to what we were saying because we had also lowered ourselves to the level of what you think is easy to say to, to speak children at mtoto analia mtoto akilia lazima pia umpoeshe ndio muendelee na class amwezi endelea na class na watu wengine wana cuz some are crying and we must love some language to make the other one who's crying stop crying so that we can continue otherwise you will have no student in that class so we will all cry and they will go go so you must find a way to 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 make the other one stop crying so we had a song Don't you cry baby don't you cry and everyone everyone is looking at the crying baby and the crying baby stops and like why is everyone why is everyone <laughs> we just had a language and every sabbath a child is conditioned knowing every sabbath there's somewhere I, i'm always done what take there are songs i'm used to singing there are things there are things we do on this day that is never done on any other what and the system is aware That thing is so intentional and deliberate it requires your time. I don't know how many times I'm in class I'm a student in bar and I have my children also and I have assignments but we also have assignments from cradle A. I have to make a ship for for, for my cr- <laughs> because it is required on Sabbath. So I have to go buy cotton wool and buy a board and a card because uh, Yaani mimi mama mkubwa nimeka na chora sheep alafu nikate alafu nitafute glue niweke alafu naweka cotton wool sababu inatakikana kama report ya next work so you have to you have to lower yourself to be able to communicate so this is where it pains me is that the person who's supposed to do that is not is a problem where where is the person going to na ongea na nyinyi yule ana style kufanya hiyo vitu ako wapi ako wapi kasini anatafuta nini pesa kutafuta pesa si mbaya eh hata chakula mzuri ya vegetarian anataka pesa Yeah, 
Vegan food is not cheap. Did you know that eggs and meat and fish is cheap? Vegan food is not cheap. For you to sample even nuts alone, nuts alone. You, you, you know, the other meal is only if you, if you don't, if, let's say you are an Adventist, a real Adventist, who is not a vegan. You only, have, you only have fish, chicken. Is it? And beef. Is it? Probably mutton. That is the far you can go. To be a vegetarian, <laughs> you must eat fruits, you must eat vegetables, you must eat nuts. What else? Seeds, stew cereals. Then when we begin to sample nuts alone, nuts alone, I'm not talking about nuts alone, because you are poor, you can only afford ground nuts. <laughs> <laughs> and someone will brag, today we ate nuts in our meal. Iko watu wameweka cashew, wameweka almonds, walnut, macadamia, <laughs> I told you, I told you they are talking. <laughs> when I say they are talking, you, you thought they are not. It's a lifestyle that requires what? Money. The other day I wanted to do a vegetable salad that has a little bit of nuts. I, I was doing um, lettuce mixed with uh, pineapples and apples and cashew, okay? So I went and bought a pineapple, I bought apples, I bought cashew, 100 grams. <laughs> cashew, and then you do it. Cashew, 100 grams, ni gorogoro moja ya groundnuts, okay? Iyo ni kitu wata ukiweka kwako, wezi beba hivi yeti unakula hivi, mi ni 600, Bob. Nikitu na drain familia, ukipita unakuchukua moja. That's how cashews are eaten. And macadamia. Ama ni nadanganya. That's how they are eaten. Iyo kitu wezi yeka, adi, 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 yeke, mamini yeke. Hehehe. Tawza baba yako ndi akona fango ni ya cashew wapa. No. So because I know, for, in the past I've bought a lot of cashew, and... People stop eating in the house. All of a sudden, no one eats anything. People just eat nuts. So today I only buy it when it's necessary. So I went and bought 100 grams just for the salad. And then I came back. Now I want to prepare my salad. I had raisins also. <laughs> I only found lettuce only. They have eaten the pineapples. They have eaten, <laughs> they have eaten the apples. They have eaten the raisins. Raisins, I found a few re remaining. I was not hurt. What hurt me most was the cash. Hey, <laughs> So I'm saying we need the money. No one is saying we don't need it. We need it. Adventist lifestyle is not cheap because our God is also not what? Cheap. Adventist lifestyle requires you are a Lua full time. <laughs> not a full time Lua. A full time. There, there are Luas. Not all Luas are. We have people called full time what? <laughs> So I know we must go out look for money. But I'm saying to the point you neglect home duties is a sin to our God in heaven. It is a great sin. Because what it means is you will earn the money you will enjoy the money, but there's a, there's a neglected space that will make sure you don't see who? God. You and your what? So even the, the children you thought you were building a big house for, the children you thought you wanted to take to the best schools, they will go to the best schools, they will live in a big house, they'll put on the best dresses, each one of them will own a car. You guys have not gone to Companzoia. Every child has a car. 
Unaangalia mpaka unasema waacheni kutuchezea. Katoto katoto kanaenda international school 13 year 14 kanaenda shagari. <laughs> Wewe bado unapiga kalala. <laughs> I know you want the money. But what what is it if a man gains the whole world and loses his what? So and they will tell you this power in dual income i have no problem when daddy earns mommy earns that's a lot of money but i can assure you with your dual income it doesn't matter how much money you have you are brewing a serious problem that no amount of money will do it and so and today we have rich families but have no what peace they have educated children but cannot think wako na wao hapo kwa hiyo nyumba zao kubwa kubwa wanafika 40s wanaelekea 50s hao wakata kuo tusema tuko hapo tena wanaambia mama yao <laughs> you're mistaken if you think we'll give you grand grandchildren they're not interested in marriage they're also not planning to leave that home <laughs> because when you build you build everyone with their own what petro and it's not about the money i have those families and they call you and tell us pastor what do we do they are 40s mid 40s late 30s they have no intention of moving out of their home and they are well schooled and they'll tell you we don't believe in your god what's the point sasa haja gani and i tell people this this is my my conviction when you uphold the principles of god he will stand with you when you're determined you have purpose to do the will of god i tell you you'll be the richest You don't need dual income to be rich. Just the fact that you're doing his will is enough for him to bless you with excess. You can see they're already looking for me. They want to leave church. So now they want to leave church. They're asking me how do we get home? You think it's easy? So I have to finish this and call them and get someone to drive them home. Friends, there's a little flock in our hands i said marriage is for them for their happiness the best you can give a child is not education not food the best you can give your child is a character for eternity it is deliberate it is intentional it requires commitment it requires time is the best gift you can give to your children i pray you will reconsider i know the world has turned things up and upside down nothing no longer works it's so complicated until when you look at it you say wengine wanasema nikiacha kazi huyu mjamaa anaweza niruka hapa mbele so they live in marriage with eventualities let me tell you when you prophesy it will it will become true we are not in marriage with eventualities tuliingia kuna kutoka hiyo kitu inafanyika ifanyike tutapambana nayo ikifika hiyo taya ndio utajua Mungu ni naomba ni Mungu anayeishi hivyo ndo tunapambana kwa marriage kini kishinda anaweza niruka nitabaki na watoto wakikula aje itafika mpaka ukaweka account ukasema hii ni ya for the rainy day it will rain ya ukweli na atakuacha why because you planned for it so you give the devil a chance to actualize it what are you hiding from your spouse my husband says this if if i know your nakedness and i give you babies what is it what else can i hide from you nini nini ya kuficha ati bank account alafu mnakufa kama wajinga hakuna pesa ya kukuzika sababu iko pin pin yenye bibi yako ajui 
ya Mpesa iko na 200,000. Inaenda tu hivyo hivyo tu kwa unclaimed assets. Na watoto wako wanateseka. Because no one knew you had 200,000 in your Mpesa account. They have no pin. Ni kasiana fulani kametokezea tu. Anakuja na watu wengine wawili wanafanana bwana yako. Sama nataka hiyo simu yake kuna kitu waliniambia niwaambie. Ndio nasema alikwambia tuambie nini? Mpate tu simu yake niwaonyeshe. Kwanza na transfer hiyo pesa yote kwa account yake Allah. <laughs> the money is resources we have lost and our children would have benefited because of you can't be open to the other part. Why is he called your husband or wife if you still have things that you're hiding? What for? Aki huyo bado amejaoana. Huyo ni boyfriend. Bado kuna vitu umeficha. Bado amejaoana. Bado bado uja uja iva. You're not mature. Aki you're not. A woman man you share with the same bed. You know how they look. You know how they behave. And you still have some few things you can't openly talk about. You're not in marriage kwa kitu kingine sio marriage kitu kingine tofauti sana and we do all that for the sake of our children it is that openness that openness i'm really trying to cultivate it in my house it is that openness because i don't shop in my house we have delegated it to our firstborn all shopping in the house i don't even know if they sukari right now in my house me i have no idea watoto sita ni wengi ukichukua hiyo vitu yote utakufa so lazima <laughs> ukianza kufanya kazi zote utakufa naambia mwingine ai wewe umetoshea hii ini, ini kazi yako so what we do is she knows how much food we need for a, for a whole week and she budgets she goes by she brings she knows how much shopping we need for a whole month and she knows the inventory hii imeisha hii bado iko hapo nilihama kitambo hiyo ni kazi ndogo ndogo siwezi fanya so one day normally she's used to she does budgets and then she tells me mommy 6000 7000 that's food just food mboga nyanya nini hizo so one day i had about 22000 in my purse then i open it is less 6000 i'm like ah me i don't have a thief in my house then i ask where is nati Senatia ameenda soko. Then I ah, ni yeye amechukua. So namngoja namtegea. Akaingia nikamwambia, "Mama, when did you start entering my purse?" I'm pulling money without telling me. Si kwani nilikuwa naenda kununua vitu. Si kwani kuna kuna hizo vitu zako. I was going to buy it my things. I was going to buy your things. Yaani hata unafurahia kila siku nafanya budget alafu nikamwambia, "Mama, ni 6000, ni pay 6000." And I know it is in the purse. I can only ask you if I open and I find nothing. The point is I have shopped this is the budget this is the change ndio hii change yako sijakula So I called the father and told the father hey how do we handle this and he said provided she has not stolen and she has accounted for it she's just trying to be open And where does she learn it because we leave our passes there with our, my husband I got it, get into his purse I pull money gets into my purse he pulls money Okay. But my question is the man she'll get married to and she goes to his pass. <laughs> hey, I'm pulls my we understand. That is my wife. Is there a woman raising a son like that for my God? Cuz for every child you have, I want you to remember the back of your mind that will become someone's wife or husband. Is there a family raising a similar trait in their children that i can spend money without telling you provided i know is a genuine budget that we always have in the house that is my worry ana baduni mama nataka pesa baba naangalia kwanza huko you're not married yet i think i think there's a high level of distrust in that marriage high level high
high level. And at times I don't blame men. I blame the women. Why? Because you waited one day, he went into the bathroom and you took his wallet and pulled out 4K. And he knows he had 10. Akirudi. Nana mechukua pesa hapa. Wendo mechukua pesa. Hey, umeniona. Mini lijua ta kama ulikuwa na pesa. Na kweli umechukua. And then when you ask her, she says, sini, sini watoto wake nina, nina lisha. Siendi kufanyia ki. Yeah, ni watoto wake, but you don't need to steal it. You don't need to steal it. You are a thief. <laughs> Who can trust a thief? If I can't trust you with 10,000 in my wallet, how do I trust you with my pin for my current account? How now? If I can't trust you with my pass, how do I trust you with my pin number? Inamanisha unaweza ta niyekia kadawa ni lale usiku, na uchukue gari, na uchukue na ATM kadi yako, na uende, withdraw, na urudi, na uweke, na uingie kitanda. Na nikiamuka nda kupata hapo, na sina reason kuimaji na ti ulifanya nini? Uli talk. Those traits, you must be so intentional and deliberate about it to cultivate in your children. Very intentional. I tell my children, no one, when you're 21, the girls, you're marriageable. 21, you're marriageable. Ukika sana 23. So, our girl is 18. She has three years in my house. At most five. So we have now started training her to become a homemaker. That's why we are training her. You need to buy this. You need, this is how you handle money. So right now we are working for a bank account for her. We put money. She sees how to manage her. But I'm going to take a fire to end the No. Just put money in her account. We have to train her. So that when she is married, she can help the husband manage their what? Their resources. And she knows she has three to five years in our house. I miss you thinking I'm Stiana 24. Nataka tuombe. Kisumu ni mbali. Gari ya mwisho natokanga saa 12 zi. Na tayari ni 11 na 49. Yes. Ati nitafika wewe wacha kunienjoy hakuna kufika. <laughs> Najua nitafika. So jamani wa Kristo uko kwa ndoa sababu ya nini? It is for the happiness of your children. I will become the best wife for the sake of my children. My husband will become the best husband for the sake of our what? Why? Because God requires a godly people to inherit eternity. If you've heard me preach about the purpose of marriage, he requires a godly people to repopulate heaven. There are vacancies in heaven left by angels. And we were created specifically to fill those vacancies. That is why Malachi says, why did he make them one? Because he requires a godly offspring. So he instituted marriage because it requires a production that fears him to occupy the vacant places that were left in heaven. So marriage is not for sex and the rest. Marriage is you will raise a godly people. For what? For eternity. And that is why it has to be heavenly so that we can raise godly children. May the Lord bless us in Jesus' name.